Hi there, folks. How are you doing? I'm just going to share my uh, video for the little section. Um, I've just realised I can't see my slides anymore, which is somewhat confusing. Um, you can let's... share your share your video and then be able to reshare your your uh, slides afterwards. Ah, uh, there we go. That's cool. That's what I was looking for. So, hello. Yes, uh, my name is Sarah Thomas. Uh, I'm the Scotland Program Coordinator for Wikimedia UK. Um, and today I'm going to be talking about Wikimedia and activism. Um, I'm also going to be talking quickly because I've uh, probably written about a 30 minute presentation for a 15 minute slot. Um, and this is something that I, I really do uh, care fairly deeply about. I'm going to switch off my video for the purposes of uh, saving bandwidth. Um, so just to move on to my next slide, this is me. These are my contact details here. Um, as I said, I'm the Scotland Programme Coordinator for Wikimedia UK. I've been being enthusiastic at people about open knowledge since 2015. Um, I'd also like to draw attention here. You um, should, if you're registered for the conference, have received an email today um, about the launch of the Wikimedia and Education booklet. Um, we've been working on this for quite a long time now. Uh, Wikimedia UK and the University of Edinburgh It is a collection of case studies about using Wikimedia in education. And um, there is there's some fantastic work in there. If you are in any way interested in um, getting Wikimedia engagement into your curriculum, um, I highly, highly recommend that you go um, that you go look at that. Um, so moving on, this this uh, this slide here is an illustration that came out of Wiki EDU 20, um, which was a satellite event of OER 20, um, uh, and this event took place in uh, the, at the Coventry University in February, when uh, back when coronavirus was something that just happened to other people. Um, it was a gathering of wiki interested educators from all over the country and in attendance was the, the rather fabulous Brian Mathers of Visual Thinkery. And this is one of the illustrations that he that he came up with. And it's important to me because it was an enduring theme of the day. And this idea that engagement with the Wikimedia project has a direct link to activism. Um, as a phrase, as a concept, um, it's something that I first came across in an interview with a Wikipedia editor called Lucas Reynoso, who was studying at the University of Edinburgh, when he said that he liked editing Wikipedia because it allowed him to become an activist of knowledge. And this theme was really interesting to me, not least because I knew I was uh, giving this presentation and it's always nice to see that he works on trend. In this session, I said I wanted to look at the potential and the limitations of Wikimedia project engagement, open education for civic engagement and democracy, and ask if information literacy should be considered a key skill for effective participation in citizenship. So spoiler alert, I really, really do, um, because I don't think that we're often given as a society access to the best quality of information that is necessary to make big and important decisions. To set up my stall, I believe that access to high quality, reliable information is a keystone in the creation of a better society. I believe that open practice is important because I believe that general public deserves access to high quality, accurate information. I believe that a general public uh, that has access to high quality, uh, uh, accurate information can, in theory, make more informed decisions. Informed decisions are, in theory, better de de decisions, and in theory, better decisions should lead us towards a better society. So for me, open practice has a moral and ethical dimension. I think there is a need for this. There is a need for us to be providing high quality, accurate information, and that's because people are in search of high quality, reliable information. I'm hoping that this slide will come out. Um, these are some screen grabs uh, that I took uh, last week of the page views on Wikipedia for various uh, Wikipedia articles to do with coronavirus. Um, this you hear that there were something. So this is the one for coronavirus, the general coronavirus. 14.8 million people looked at that um, in the period between the 1st of February and the 25th of March. If I move on to the next one, this is coronavirus 2019, which is the, the specific strain that's affecting us at the moment. Um, 6.8 million people look at that during the same time period. This is the one that really blows my mind. The, 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 the page for the 2019-2020 coronavirus pandemic, the particular event that's happening, 15.6 uh, million people looked at that um, uh, article uh, during that time period with a, an average of 1.1 million people per day looking at that information. Um, those uh, numbers have gone slightly down slightly now. Um, I'm going to tweet out the link to my with some links in there um, after this uh, and you'll be able to see that, that now fewer people are looking at that. But basically the TLDR on this is that people are in search of information. 
Open knowledge lets us stand on the shoulders of giants. This is the thing that we keep on saying. Open knowledge leads us to cures faster. So people like the Welcome, um, uh, Welcome uh, Bloodwise, uh, Cancer Research UK all know this. If you get a grant from them, um, then you have to publish your findings openly because open research leads us to cures faster. This does, of course, um, assume this idea that, that we should publish things openly and that this will lead us to better society assumes, of course, that anyone's reading. These, uh, this is one of the most depressing things I've ever seen on the internet. Um, these are the page views for uh, the European Union. Uh, take the Wikipedia article, um, English Wikipedia for the European Art, uh, Union, taken on the 27th of June, the 22nd of June, sorry, so that's 55, 9,198, 55,000. Uh, the 23rd of June, 100,000. And uh, the 24th of June, which uh, the eagle eyed among you will recognise as the day after the, uh, the referendum uh, in the UK on um, uh, the, the European Union, 1.2 million. So that's the day after more people looked at it. So when 1.2 million people look at the Wikipedia article on the EU on the day after the 2016 UK EU referendum, compared to just 56,000 the day before, you can sometimes be left wondering what the point is. The starting point that we have here is that access to information is key. The access to information is what we need. But it's a fallacy, of course, to believe that access to information purely on its own equals instant enlightenment. Information literacy, the desire to look for information, to be able to understand it, to ask intelligent questions of it, should, to my mind, be a key skill for the effective participation in democracy. We keep getting asked to make big, huge, life-changing decisions based on incomplete and inaccurate information, and that is not good enough. Knowledge is knowing that tomato is a fruit. Wisdom is not putting it into a fruit salad. So to my mind, knowledge is nothing without literacy. Just providing information isn't, isn't enough. People have to want to look for it. We have to understand how to be able to interpret it. And perhaps the lesson in the comparison of these two events and those, those screen grabs is one about public consciousness, about a desire for information and the role of public discourse in determining what it is that people look. Um, I nearly put those two events in the opposite order, to be honest, because it was a bit more hopeful, but I, I, I thought that that, that kind of would have been, that would have been a bit too easy. Um, Knowledge is, is nothing without literacy. Um, at Wikimedia UK, we know a bit about literacy. We bit know uh, a bit about digital literacy and media literacy and data literacy. Um, last year, two years ago, um, we did a bit of research uh, mapping Wikimedia project engagement against existing digital literacy frameworks in the UK. I highly recommend that you take a look at that. It's a really detailed piece of work. Um, and it, it really uh, has, has revealed to us how the work that we do engages with these existing frameworks of data literacy. Um, information literacy, media literacy, and how that kind of core belief that engaging with our projects can really help with those. One of the things that I want to touch on here is, is neutral point of view. So neutral point of view is a, a really central tenant of, of, of Wikipedia. It is a pillar of Wikipedia um, and it, it, it comes back, it, it really speaks to the idea that Wikipedia should not be biased, that as far as possible um, it can be neutral and that it reflects just the facts. There's been a lot of pixels built on non-political action um, within Wikipedia. And, uh, it's also crucial in the idea of uh, reaching consensus. Catherine Mayer, uh, the CEO of the Wikimedia Foundation, has pointed out that Wikimedia is the one place on the internet where you go for an argument and you become more reasonable over time. But open practice is not non-political. Open practice to me is intrinsically linked to issues of social justice. Neutral point of view can be difficult for a couple of reasons, primarily because nothing is ever truly neutral. It's, it's uh, complete objectivity is, is really difficult. Um, and it can, it can tie people up in an obfuscation of privilege and the, the occasional mischaracterization of the, as the, of the endeavor to plug particular gaps in knowledge as being a soapbox or agenda, an, uh, an agenda. And this is unfortunately where we sometimes see the on-wiki perpetuation of off-wiki societal issues, the recreation of bias. Um, the ways in which knowledge is produced is not neutral and it is an effect of privilege to believe that it is. For the most part, the wiki community is also aware of its own issues with systemic bias, um, for example, around gender. It's also been well documented how, uh, documented how some countries have banned or sought to restrict access to Wikipedia, including Turkey, China and Russia. And in this way, we understand that providing free access to information is a political and in, sometimes context, in some contexts, radical act. Um, 
this is the slide I've got up now is the Wikimedia Foundation's uh, strategic uh, kind of movement strategy um, for 2018 to 2020. And I, I've pointed to the, the, the last aspect there of knowledge equity. This is something that Lorna Campbell talked about yesterday. Um, knowledge equity, looking at the gaps in knowledge, looking at structural bias, looking at how it is that knowledge gets onto the biggest encyclopedia in the world. Um, we've been aware in the community of, of, of these issues for a long time. We've been working to address it at a community level and at a strategic level. One of Wikimedia UK's strategic goals for the upcoming years is that of addressing underrepresented content with focus on those voices left out by structures, power and privilege. And this for me is where learning intersects with agency and of learning as a political act. Dr. Al John did some research on um, editor funds at the University of Edinburgh um, a couple of years ago, and the key quote um, from the from her uh, from the work that she's done around that, around looking at the editor fund and the process of becoming a Wikipedia editor, is that learning becomes personal, but it triggers forms of agency. So in this way that we we have this movement and we see this reproduced in um, in a lot of the work that we do. Uh, with, in, with with media and education is that we have this movement from learners being a passive consumer of knowledge to an active producer of knowledge and that that's really a key shift in the way that we think about learning um, and that with the way we think about ourselves as learners and in the way that we approach information being involved in the production of knowledge gives you agency and insight to agree a degree which it is not possible which is not possible from the passive subject position of being a consumer of knowledge so here's what I want to move on to some of the ways, some of the, the projects that we've been involved in, um, in helping people to move from that, that, that passive consumer of knowledge to that active producer of knowledge and how that intersects with activism. The first of these was Brave Edit. This is a, uh, a project that we undertook with Amnesty International. This is a worldwide project. And this looked at getting uh, primarily biographies of women human rights defenders into Wikipedia. And um, there was also a, a lot of other work that went around with that. Um, uh, getting uh, these women's stories and the um, causes for which they work known onto Wik Wikipedia. This was an interesting one actually because normally you wouldn't ask people permission to get to, to put their biography onto Wikipedia but there was a lot of work that was done uh, by Amnesty International in the background to ensure that those women actually wanted their work um, uh, being promoted because for some of them obviously that's the, the, there was an element of safety in that that we had to consider. So in, uh, to, to come back to our theme of care um, to consider whether or not um, those people actually uh, wanted their work um, to be up and out there. But this was an element of uh, where we had uh, people working in activism in uh, for for, international, for Amnesty International um, to have a real opportunity to get these women's stories told, to get that information up into Wikipedia. Um, the second one that I want to point to is art and feminism. Art and feminism has been going now for, mm, I want to say, five years. Um, and it happens that it happens um, every year around about um, International Women's Day. And, and it's about uh, closing the gender gap on Wikimedia. We know that, um, that there is a gender gap on Wikipedia. And about uh, getting more articles um, and uh, more coverage of uh, women and art, uh, feminism and art. Um, that, that, that one in particular um, has become, I'm just going to go back to that slide, that one in particular has become um, particularly popular and particularly successful over the last few years. Um, the Dumfries stone carving project in the slides, I've, actually, I've linked out both to a blog post that I wrote about this um, and to a paper um, that I gave at Heritage dot, uh, myself and Dr. Tara Beale from the Dumfries stone carving project about how engagement with the Wikimedia projects um, for community heritage projects um, helps to give those projects a uh, more longevity, the, the outputs of those projects more longevity after the end of, of, uh, of the project. Um, I've done a lot of work um, with Tara in doing in doing that kind of thing. So the Dumfries Stone Carving project was about um, a community heritage project kind of taking ownership um, of, of their project, looking at this incredible history of stonework in Dumfries, um, stone carving in Dumfries, and getting that content out into, into many different formats, one of which was Wikimedia Commons. Um, and getting that output out there meant that, that once that project finishes and the project has now finished, um, that those images uh, are kind of released into the public domain, released into public consciousness. 
Um, the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft, um, which is, uh, has been a, an absolutely fantastic project, um, which was a data literacy project uh, working with the, the Survey of Scottish Witchcraft, a great piece of research done by the, yes, you and witches, um, a great piece of research done by the University um, of Edinburgh, um, and uh, getting that information into Wikidata, which allowed um, a data visualisation intern at the university to put together, um, and a lot of other people at the university to put together um, this incredible website, this incredible Research. One of the things that I really took away from that is that data visualization gives such an entry point into understanding data and into understanding cultural history in a way that just a regular database can't. Um, and there, there's yeah, there's been an awful lot of media interest in that. Um, Moving on now, this is the last one, kind of bring it up today, um, the COVID-19 task force. So there's, there was a, a great Wired piece um, that, I've, uh, that I've linked to on there. Um, there are two wiki projects on English Wikipedia, on Wiki Project Medicine, dealing specifically with COVID-19. Um, and uh, another there that, that's Wikidata, um, again, looking at, uh, looking at COVID-19 and trying to get the best quality of information out there on Wikipedia as possible. So yeah, this is this is just to, to, to wrap up there. Engagement with the Wikimedia projects for open education is for, for civic engagement and democracy. I want people to get involved, be a knowledge activist. Thank you very much. Wow.